and anxiety from everyone that um, this fear of old age and what it brings. It took five years to get a diagnosis and that was because um, when the second neurologist, in spite of the reports, said it was of no significance and I knew that it was, I begged to be sent back for a third assessment and he sent me to the professor. And it was the professor who told me that I definitely had something wrong with my temporal lobes and explained that it was my intelligence that enabled me to cover up and I just wasn't picked up on the the earlier assessments. It's about three years before people receive a diagnosis. That's three years of lost opportunity, really. It's three years of lack of support. It's three years of not being able to make adjustments to your own life. And it's three years less of being able to plan for the future. And the first neurologist, even before I sat down, said, Jennifer, there's nothing the matter with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and didn't do any investigations at all and implied I was attention seeking. He didn't consider any of my symptoms were significant. So I was humiliated and decided to cover up even more. And you can be quite good at covering up. Mm. My partners at work had no idea mm. that I was struggling. People do want reassurance that they haven't got a problem with their memory and it is maybe just related to stress or anxiety. But for those for whom there is a problem, being able to detect those patients early is really, really important. And we will become increasingly so with the advent of the appropriate sort of medication um, and, other, uh, and other treatments. Mainly for me, it was the motivation to start educating patients and GPs in particular and helping other people to be positive about their dementia. And until they have a diagnosis, they can't be because they're just frightened. But once they know, then they can really set to. There's a lot of patients out there who are not diagnosed. Um, due to limitation of time of examination and time in doing the formative um, memory testing like the MMSE. If you're intelligent you can often find ways around these things and for me it would, wouldn't pick up very much because I know because I can work things out from a different perspective and I'm sure that's true of a lot of people who are very intelligent. We looked quite recently at traditional paper-based screening tools and there are a number of difficulties we've had with those, such as they're subjectively scored and therefore different clinicians may score them differently and at different times. And that we found traditionally that sometimes a paper screening tool is um, sometimes a threat for the person that's being assessed. And in Warsaw it's a very multicultural area, so the language is um, not being, uh, first language not being English um, can be an issue also. The MMSE test has its place and it can be very useful but I'm sure it would, it's possible that it would miss people, and I'm sure it would have missed me if just that had been used. Hello. 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 Thank you. Have a seat, please. Thank you. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm fine in myself, but I have a, an anxiety of uh, mm. Alzheimer's creeping on. Have you used an iPad before? I have, yes. Right. right are you okay? Okay. Because the Cantab mobile is very easy to use, it's actually very intuitive even for those people who are not particularly familiar with using laptops and computers. Uh, all the patients, without exception, have managed to complete the test. Don't worry if you don't get them all right first time. You can try again. Just do the best you can. It's not directly in their face about, you know, what day is it and what time of the day and where are you from and you know so it's it's very useful as a screening tool it takes about 10 12 minutes uh, and then you've got this huge database that the Cambridge Cognition have which they can compare um, which is great because then you're getting a, a ac more accurate information the test also helps you with whether there is no problem whether there may be a problem we ought to review the patient in future um, or whether the, the person needs further uh, evaluation. And which box was this pattern in? Well done. This time there will be three patterns. As part of the tests that are on the Cantab mobile, we don't only have the, the cognitive test, we also have the possibility of screening for depression and also looking at activities for daily living. And this leads to a greater accuracy in detecting whether the problem is a true cognitive problem or memory problem or whether it is a, a potentially a mood problem. The result is not 
affected by the person administering the test. And so therefore, when it's used for sequential um, assessment of memory and cognitive function, it will be much more accurate. Part of my job is seeing all the patients who come in through A&E and admissions ward the day after they, they arrive. And I have got a, uh, a d doctor who does MMSEs on every patient who's over 65, and that is hugely time-consuming for her. I could see going out to uh, communities, retirement communities, for instance, um, even in nursing homes or residential homes and in hospital settings, in outpatient clinics, that it could be very useful. I think a tool like Cantab Mobile, when used in primary care, can lead to much more accurate referrals to us in secondary care. Uh, when people visit a GP and they have a memory problem, the kind of tools that GPs are using now may be good at picking up dementia, but they are probably not very good at picking up the symptoms that might lead to dementia. And it's those people who have mild symptoms that might get missed by the tools that are used now. And Cantab Mobile is the sort of tool that can pick things up much earlier. And we can see those people before they develop widespread problems and problems that really start to interfere with their everyday activities. Okay, let me just see what the result of that was then, okay? Yes, thank you. Mm. Whilst we're currently working very much in the independent sector, we are also uh, working together with our consultants to create a pathway which is ideally suited for interfacing with general practice for NHS patients. Uh, this will provide a very fast and efficient diagnosis for patients for whom there is a concern about memory problems and which will um, provide clarity at the onset of the patient pathway. This is absolutely fine. Thank you. Uh, the test indicates no cause for concern with your memory at Wonderful. all. Thank you. I think we can be very happy with that. Thank you. If things don't settle down, Come and tell us though, okay? I will. Thank All right. you so much. Thank I do believe okay. that the so use of say. the Cantab mobile test in general practice will greatly improve the rate of diagnosis uh, of patients with serious cognitive disorders. It's better for everybody. It's easier for GPs. We get to see the patients earlier and the patients benefit because they, they're seen and they get treated, treatment if they need it. I can get an assessment of what their memory is like um, without having to refer them off for other tests, without having to refer them off for further neuropsychological evaluation. I believe our primary role in primary care is to be screening appropriately and making informed referrals of people who are at risk. Early diagnosis is crucial because you can't put anything in to help people, you can't give them support, you can't encourage them to apply for benefits um, if they don't know what, what's wrong with them. It is so worthwhile to diagnose dementia earlier because there's so much that is positive about dementia and that can still be done about it. I think actually Cantar Mobile is going to be amazing. <laughs>